So the rocker. If you can see the black on the frets. The rocker never lies. So yep, had to do a little bit of fret filing on this as far as leveling goes. So I just want to take this down just a little bit more. Not too much more, just to get these guys to start to skim a little bit more on the tops. And get rid of this edge right here, and that one right there. Otherwise, I'll be doing the edges of the frets afterwards. So, yep, this is going to get some full-blown out work done to it. All right. So let me kind of get you guys into what I'm doing here. Working on the neck a little bit. All right, I think you guys are in place. So I have these sets of files. They're jeweler files and uh, they're very, very nice. Now, one of these I modified, which I need to find out which one I modified because it's been a while. Uh, this one here I modified basically to help with going around the edges of the frets and uh, this side here and this side here I cut the or removed the actual file that was around the edges and I also have another one in here that I did the same thing too if I can find it see these have the file is wrapped around the edges as well and I want one that does not and I know I did it to another one I just have to find the damn thing yeah, here it is. This one I did the same thing. You see it's kind of shiny over here. That's so when I go around the frets on the sides that uh, this is not going to dig into the fretboard. Now, first thing I want to do, is it feels like these frets are hanging over the edge a little bit. So without messing up the fretboard or anything, I want to try to get rid of that. Now, I used a fret guru for doing this. And you, there's a little bit of an angle on the edge of the fret and you can see that very very clearly and I match the guru up with the fret angle that's on the sides and I just slowly rock it back and forth all the way down the fretboard and you can clearly see that the fret themselves is being removed on the edge that is sticking out that is sharp by the amount of dust that is building up on the edges of the fret. Now if I take my fingers and I go across it like this, very smooth. Not even the edges feel sharp. No, the edges feel pretty good. I want to check every one of them because, like I said, usually around this area here, they kind of slack off on, on fixing the frets. Like I said, they should have done this when it was off, the neck was off the body. But this side here needs to work on it really bad too because they're really, really sharp. So what I'm going to do is basically match up 
the angle here with the fret itself and do the same thing. They do have a tool for doing this, but I don't have that tool. Being very careful because the body is right here. much better much much do a much little better. bit more with the smoother side this way it removes the burr or whatever that the other side the scratches at the other side left in the side of the fret all right so what i want to do now is basically go over the edges of the frets a little bit just to smooth them off just that much more. to make sure both sides of the frets feel good. I'm happy. Nice. All right, so that part of this is done. And uh, let's get to the rest of it. So I'll be back. Everybody, what's going on? Eric here, and you are looking at the 2019 giveaway Ibanez RG Series guitar. And as you can tell on the photos, I've been doing a little bit of work to it and um, getting things done. So far, I got strings on it, and uh, the neck has been all done, uh, oiled, and everything else looks pretty good. Came out pretty good. The frets came out really, really nice. And I went over the body with a little bit of Scratch Doctor on a microfiber cloth. Now, anybody who knows anything about refinishing or polishing or anything that you need to use, either rubbing compounds on or some type of a polishing solution or even waxing, you don't use paper towels for cleaning a finish, uh, uh, guitar body, automotive, anything. Anything that has a clear coat on it or, or has a gloss finish, you want to stay away from any paper towel products. The reason being is, is that the paper towel has a little bit of an abrasive inside of it. And that abrasive can scratch your finish and can give micro, micro scratches in a finish as well. You know, you might see them, the directions that you're using the paper towel with, uh, the way that you're rubbing the paper towel, uh, either, you know, from side to side, swirl motion or whatever, you will see those marks in your finish. Now, microfiber came out uh, a while back, and I tell you, that's like the best thing to use. They're, they don't, for a bundle of them, it doesn't cost that much. But it's the best thing that I found to use for doing any type of a polishing or, or even a uh, washing a vehicle or something you know they work out really really well you know the paper towel you know you're not going to use paper towels to dry or polish or buff or anything a vehicle or reason being is because it will scratch the finish you know the old glasses you know that people used to wear uh, if it didn't have the scratch resistant coating on them you never use paper towels to clean them because the paper towel would scratch them 
Same thing with this. It's the exact same thing. Same thing with plastic. You do not want to use paper towel on plastic because it will fog and, and scuff up plastic. So plus, uh, the fibers that are in paper towel are known and very good for grabbing uh, different types of particles that could be in the air and dust and everything else. And you're basically rubbing that those particles into your finish, creating more of a problem. Now, this thing here, I went over it with my scratch doctor. And just to kind of like, you know, clean it up a little bit and, you know, get my fingerprints off of it and stuff, even though I'm going to go touching it and when I do the setup on there. And I'll go over it again with a little bit of the scratch doctor. And as you can see, it seems to brought out the blue a lot more than what it was. And uh, the scratch doctor, it doesn't have a wax in it, but it kind of feels like it has some type of a wax in it to protect the finish. Now, don't quote me on it. I'm not too sure if it does or if it doesn't, but it sure does feel like after you use it. And I will go over this and put a little bit of a wax just to protect the uh, finish that's on here and uh, seal this thing up really nice. So, so far, everything is working out pretty good. Um, right now, I'm basically going to make sure this thing is still in tune because the strings have been stretched a little bit and uh, I still have to do check out the uh, neck relief on this thing get the action height set up and then do a uh, check the nut at the, the action height at the first fret so right now yeah strings are still stretching a little bit so so what I want to do with it right now is get the strings up to pitch, check my neck relief. All right, I'm in place where I gotta be as far as being tuned goes. Now, if you notice that I ended up doing a number where I straightened out the neck. Well, I haven't gotten around to doing anything with the neck just yet as far as checking my relief. So, put the capo at the first fret. Grab my 12,000 shim. Yeah, these, the, these are nice, but they start to oxidize a little bit and, you know, start showing signs of rust. Usually these things are really oily when uh, uh, you first get them and stuff. Wiping off the oil, that's what happens. So let's go ahead and check out what the relief is at the first, or at the, uh, uh, seven eight nine fret now basically what i want to do is fret this basically where the body meets the neck and we have a lot of relief so i'm going to open up this little cavity over here let me find a small smaller flathead screwdriver i like these trapdoor the trapdoor idea as far as opening this thing up to get access to this thing and I want to use this truss rod and give it a little bit of a turn and see where I'm at now. Now what you're looking for is you do not want the string, you have to go with the angle of the fret with your, uh, if you guys are, in, am I in there? Yeah, I'm in the camera. You gotta go with the angle of the fret in order to do this properly, otherwise you will be raising the string up if you're not. And right now, that looks pretty damn good. Alright, so let me close up this little trap door over here. You gotta be careful with this trap door because it has a track that it sits in when you close it and you don't want to Mess that up. Alright. So next thing I want to do is check the action height. And this is going to be a little bit fun because I have to make a radius with this bridge. So the first thing I want to do is get the outer low E and the inner low E where I want it to be. And right now we are over 564s. And we are at two millimeters, a little bit, oh, right on the line with the two millimeters. Now I could leave that at that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to lower it down even more. 
and we're at uh, 1.5 one, five, uh, a millimeter and a half on the high side and we are at a little bit above a sixteenth so I'm going to end up bringing that down as well so right now I need to figure out the radius of this neck and here are my radius tools so I believe this was a 15 I believe this was a 15 inch radius on this guitar. So what I'm going to do is slide this in here, go over here, and put this in here, and that's what it is. So that's what I want to match up this neck to be, or the bridge to be. <coughs> now, <clears throat> on this bridge is no different than any other, like, uh, a bridge that you would see for say a, a uh, fender where you have to adjust both sides and you don't want this thing to be curved like this where you have one set screw is lower than the other set screw you want these all to be equal and go up in steps with the arch of the neck this one here somebody ended up doing the curve thing with it so I'm going to have to change that and even them out because I hate when people do that. So I have to bring up one side, get the right, bring up one side, that's good. And this is gonna change my action height, so. This one here needs to go up a little bit. This one can go down a little bit. Now uh, you can use a ruler to kind of uh, adjust this. Oops, wrong way. All right, all right, this one here has to go up on the one side a little bit. And down on the other side. All right, I would say that is pretty much straight. So now what I want to do is take the outside strings, get my 564 it's here, turn each side of the saddle equally, to lower the action height to 564 it's. Check my saddle to make sure that that saddle is not sitting crooked while I'm doing this. All right, so I'm at 5 64ths on the low side, and I want a 16th on the other side, which this needs to come down just a little bit. And I am right there. All right, so the trick that I use to get the rest of the strings to go with the outside strings is I will use this. And I will stick this either on top of the strings or I will stick it under the strings, which right now, each one of these strings have to be moved besides the two outer ones. So I'll take this and I can go underneath the strings, holding them up, and I can see which strings, how this thing balances on here, which strings are touching and which strings are not. So right now I have to raise the two center ones because they are really touching. And you can tell how this is by the way the string gets muted as well. 
All right, so. So right now I am pulling up the, this string here has to go up a little bit. And when you pluck it, so that's telling me this one here has to go up a little bit more. When it sounds like that, it's touching this thing here. This side here is basically where I want it to be. Now, this side here, you can kind of get the feel of it when you push down on the string. You can kind of see the string touching or moving on it. Done. Simple as that. Now I should have the arch with the neck. And all these saddles should be pretty much even with each other. So this one here has got to go up a little bit. And down on this side so I can keep my action height the way it was. So here goes down a little bit on this side. And up on this side. All right, so now all I want to do is put the back, put it back in tune. here not bad so the next thing I need to do with this thing here is I'm going to let it sit overnight with the tension on the strings I'm not going to set the intonation just yet because the neck relief needs to go through its little thing uh, so I know exactly where the neck is going to be 24 hours later from now. This way, whatever changes that it were made, um, the neck could, you know, change in temperature or whatever. There's a happy medium as far as finding out exactly. You can adjust it one time and be done with it, uh, or you can adjust it twice and be done with it. And sometimes that happens. So with this neck here, I'm going to let it sit overnight. I'm going to do a um, come back to it tomorrow. And I'm going to end up checking the relief in the neck to make sure it stayed where I set it. Now that the strings are up to pitch, action height is where I want it to be. The next thing I need to do after checking the neck tomorrow is put the intonation where it's got to go. And then set the height for these pickups. And I've got my little... God, I love these tools. These are great. Instead of sitting there fighting around with a ruler, you know, pick up a set of these guys here for setting up your pickup height. Works out great. So that's it for today, and I hope you enjoyed. And, uh, you know, jump in on this contest if you want to jump in on it. Uh, remember, United States only. And, uh, yeah, so it's working out pretty good. Everything's going right where I want it to be. And I do want to check the action height at the first fret, but right now it looks really fucking nice. You know, it's probably, I'm looking at maybe an 18,000th at the first fret, uh, Especially for 10s being on here, I think that's pretty good because if I go any lower than that, I might get a buzz at the first fret. If I go to like a 16,000th or so to drop it down a little bit, it might get a little bit of a buzz because of the rotation of this string. So I'm not too sure if I really want to go that route or not, but uh, we'll see. All right, guys, take it easy. Take care and have a good one. And uh, remember, follow the rules when it comes to polishing and shit like that, and you'll end up, uh, your results will end up being unreal. And uh, 
in under fluorescent lighting or even any type of lighting with a glare hitting the finish uh, you could still see scratches uh, depending on how you're polishing it you know when you polish something you just don't blot it on and then rub it in with another rag you want to rub it in with one rag and then remove it with the other this is how you actually polish something and uh, yeah because you have to rub it into the surface in order for the uh, rubbing compound or polish to actually work just blotting it on and rubbing it off does not do anything at all so and again I've been working on vehicles and, and motorcycles and finishes for shit ever since I was 12 years old so and you guys have seen a lot of my finishes and everything else through previous videos and uh, you know, I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to this shit so follow those rules and you'll end up with a really nice finish remember certain scratches uh, depending on the depth of them especially if you can take your fingernail and go into those scratches are not going to come out um, in order to remove scratches properly you have to go through a procedure with sandpapers uh, kind of like I did with the uh, BC Rich guitar otherwise those scratches will still be in the finish they're not going to be come out you might have dumbed them down a lot but they're not going to come out uh, uh, just with a simple uh, very smooth grit sandpaper so yeah, I go through processes in order to have a professional finish done so here we go we're done for this time for this time right now and uh, yeah so 